Welcome to the Elite Life with Trisha and Kylie. This is where we'll teach you how to develop grit, give yourself grace, and succeed in real estate. So let's dive in. Welcome, 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 friends, to another episode of the Elite Life Podcast. Yes, thank you for joining us. And my brain is exploding right now because by the time this episode goes live, you'll have like two days until Trent graduates. I know. (laughs) (laughs) It's so crazy. Like this whole year has been such a surreal time for me and it's been such an emotional roller coaster. Um... And I know that like it's it's crazy to think about because you feel like when your kids are young, at least for me, I always felt like like just get them to 18, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and now here my kid is, he's 18 and he's graduating and I know that like the roller coaster is actually just beginning for us because Trent is taking a very non-traditional path after high school. So we still have a lot of track left with a lot of climbs and twists and turns. And I really just wanted to put together this episode as a quick episode just to come on here and really encourage other parents and kids out there who may also be heading down something different than your standard high school, college job, right? Yeah, and I feel like this is perfect because we live in a world, um, the world has changed so much. Um, And we live in a world where that's not the magic formula anymore. I mean, like for our parents, it was graduate high school, maybe, and then go get a job at GM, go get a job at Ford, uh, you know, join a trade. Um, And then for us, it was like, you have to go to college, you have to go to college. So like for me personally, I went to college, I spent 30 freaking grand to get a four year degree that I am not using because I decided I wasn't going to law school. So there are so many variables and things that can happen between the age of 18 and when you come to this place of where you actually know what you want to do. And in this world, the, I have a love-hate relationship with the world we live in now because you can literally do anything you want. I mean, we have people who are making money making – I mean, like, I, I know this because my husband watches it. There are dudes out there – banking on just like filming their ice fishing yeah. like they're they're going out there anyway they set up their rig and literally hundreds and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people are watching this dude pull fish out of the ice and he's just banking off of it yeah but the problem is this is the problem that i run into even though that's that's how the world is working you get like every single person is like Oh, Trent's graduating. Where's he going to college? So you instantly get this this feeling as a mom, like, like, oh, um, he's he's, he's not, not. <laughs> he's not going to college. Hockey, hockey is my response. And I was having this conversation with a couple other hockey moms, and like, our kids are incredibly smart. Like Trent has always got all A's and B's, always been on the honor roll. The other boys that he plays hockey with, many of them are like already in college AP classes. Like these boys that take the time to be disciplined athletes, they are also disciplined and academically advanced. And, you know, you you get this pressure on social media and in your conversations with like what do you say when they're like, oh, what college are they going to? And it's like, oh, well, you know, and I always go, well, you know, it's different for goalies. And then I like after the conversation is over, I'm like, no, they don't know. It's different. And they kind of look at you like, oh, your kid's not going to college. And I had this conversation with Trent where like we sat down and I, I said, I need like, you know, and a, a 30 minutes of your time to sit down and have like a grown up conversation. And he's like, okay, great. And like we sat on the floor and he's like, are you going to be upset or sad or, or mad or feel some sort of way that I'm not going to college after I graduate, that I'm not one of these, you know, college, college athletes that everybody's posting about today. Right. And I was like, absolutely not. Like, absolutely not. And he's like, really? And I'm like, listen, 
I don't want you to think that I'm encouraging you not to go to college because by all means, there's a lot of great things that come from getting a degree and being able to go into some corporate job and and have great health insurance. And that is a path for some people. However, for Trent and for these other boys that play hockey with him and are athletes, they have devoted their entire living life to pursuing this dream. Yeah. And let's be real. Pursuing your dreams is the hard path. That is the hard path. It's very easy to do what society tells you and to graduate from high school and go to college and say you're going to be a doctor or or an attorney and then go through the steps and then eventually leave, right? That is actually an easier path because that's what's expected. So if you do what's expected, that's the path of least resistance, right? Whereas these boys, they have given up their entire lives to devote it to pursuing this dream. And they did it in the face of adversity every single day. When Trent was little, I used to get so freaking fired up and angry because constantly there would be dads that would be like, oh, it's not like any of these kids are going to go pro. It's not like any of these boys are going to the NHL. And he'd say it where they can hear him. And I wanted to grab them and shake them and be like, why not? Like somebody has to go. Why not them? Yeah. Why not your kid? And that's why your kid's not going because you're not believing in him to put that in himself that he believes in himself that I can follow this dream and I can make this dream come true. Because if you don't believe that you can achieve that dream, you absolutely won't. And if the people that are surrounding you don't believe in you, you won't have enough faith in yourself to pursue that day after day after day. And when you have these failures, you'll just see them as failures instead of realizing that each and every time you fail in life, that is the world setting you up for your future successes. That is you, you know, getting pounded against the storm so that you can build up that resilience you need to get to that next level. And I'm like, Trent, not only do you owe it to yourself, like you gave up birthday parties and having school friends and sleepovers and everything that is, you know, quote unquote normal for a childhood to be on the ice six hours a day, seven days a week. Like he hasn't taken a season off since he's five years old. And I don't say that to say like, oh, my kid's a great hockey player that's going to go in the NHL. I say that because I believed in him and told him, if you want to do it, You have to do the work, you have to put in the time, and you have to be comfortable with failing over and over and over again and saying, you know what? That's not a loss. That's preparation for bigger victories ahead. That's building my grit. That's building my determination. That is showing that I don't quit when things get hard. And no matter how many times I fall, I get back up. And you don't stop when you're frustrated. You pursue as long as it takes to get to that end goal. I love that because it's hard as a parent because you want you want the best for your kid, you know, and you you want them to to be happy. But like our jobs as parents is to make sure that they don't you know, that we share our experiences with them so that they don't make the same mistakes we do, like getting into, you know, U of M and getting into being a doctor and then realizing that that's not for you. Um, spending 30 grand on an education that you're not using. And what's beautiful is if you, if your kid comes to you, like, cause I don't, I don't see it and my kids are still really little. So, I mean, it's hard to say what's going to happen with them or if Jesus is even going to come back before then and take us all home. But if my kid comes to me and says, you know, Hey, um, You know, I really love, like if Casey comes to me and she's like, I really love fashion. I really love makeup. I really love hair. I want to do that. I'm going to help her learn what she needs to do to set herself up, to go through the schooling, and then use the tools that are out there right now to market herself and build her own brand and build her own business. Um, I totally see Kaya having her own like outdoor like Yellowstone YouTube channel. <laughs> She's just saving all the animals and the spiders and stuff. But what's important is that if your kid comes to you and says, I love earthworms, I'm going to make my job about earthworms. I want to live, eat, breathe earthworms all day long. Like understand that that's their dream and that's their passion and help them 
figure out how they can turn that into a career, into a into a way of of earning an income off of something they love. I mean, you could tell I've been reading Gary Vee. So <laughs> <laughs> But it's totally, it's never been more possible than it is now. Yeah. And it's up to us to, to be the encouragers of dreams because let's, let's be real about it. If you love what you do, you're going to be amazing at it. You're going to be successful in it because you love it. Like you wake up every morning and, and you don't feel like, oh, I got to go to work today. I got to get on my grind. Right? Like when it comes to hockey for Trent, there has never Never, ever, ever, ever been a day where I'm like, you got to go to practice. And he's like, oh, I don't feel like it. That's or amazing. Ever, ever. Like he will, he will wake up, wake himself up at 4 a.m. and go and work out and go and play. Literally, I watched Trent play in a tournament when he was younger. He played in a tournament for two different ages. And he was a player for, I forget what age it was. Let's say 14. So he was a player for 14s and a goalie for 15s. And it was two tournaments in the same rink. And he literally walked from rink to rink and played in 16 games in one day and won both tournaments for both age groups with different teams and I was just like how does he just like keep getting the energy to keep going like <laughs> like he would go from this rink and he'd take off his player gear and put on his goalie gear and walk across to the next rink and play as a goalie and then take off the goalie gear and put on the player gear and walk into the rink and play as a player and they won both tournaments in the same day and I'm like who gets to be back Back to back tournament champs in one day in 24 hours. And I'm like, and who keeps going? Like, I would be so just done, like done with life, done with energy, <laughs> done with hockey. And every time he got on that ice, he was smiling and he was excited and he was doing what he loved. And never once was he like, I'm tired. I'm over it. I don't want to do it anymore. I played 16 games today, blah, 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 blah. And that doesn't come because like, Trent's better than other people. That comes because his passion and his fire inside for this thing is so deep that like it's it's not hard. It's not a job, right? right. Like it's hard. It's hard. And it's a grind. But he will go through that hard and that grind because he loves it, right? Mm-hmm. I guess that's what we should get across. Like Anything that you do that's worth doing is going to be hard. Like we talk a lot on our podcast about where we are today, but it was hard to get here. And and you, at the end of the day, you choose your hard. And I'm not going to stuff my kid in some societal box um, because so I can post it on my Instagram reel. I would rather him go through the hard and the grit and the grind and have to outwork other people and have those sad moments and have those failures and have those setbacks and keep building up that resilience and that character to come back, to come back, to come back, to come back. And as he gets older, like this only gets harder, right? right? Like when he was younger and he was winning, that was fun. And every once in a while he would lose and that would suck, but there's always more hockey to play. Like none of that even matters anymore. Like he won national champs. None of that matters. Not, none of the national development team matters. None and any, every single time he steps on the ice is a tryout every single time. So this is only going to get harder, but what he needs is me to be there to be his encourager, exactly. to be his cheerleader. He doesn't need me to be like, oh, well, you know, now it's really hard. Maybe you should just go to college and get yourself a real job. Oh, I hate that. A no. Real- job no. what's a real job anyways like it it's 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 frustrating because when you have and it's hard sometimes so like when you have people in your life who don't come from a generation where like like I always touch on my dad like he's my dad it's his job to tell me when I'm screwing up right like that's his job which is fine but when I said Ryan and I are gonna go all in on real estate. He was like, wait a minute, the GM plant's hiring. Okay. You're, and I'm like, no, like this is what we're vested in. This is what we're doing. Um, and I had plenty of people come alongside me and encourage us and be like, you can do it and give it time. So I think one of the pieces that I would have to say is like, not only support your kids, like whether they're doing hockey, whether they're doing sports or art or whatever it is. Um, encourage them, support them, um, and show them, I think, 
even if you're not sure like what to do or how to help them, like be like, I'm here, like we'll research it together, like we'll figure it out. Like when I did decide I wanted to go to college, like neither one of my parents went to college. They didn't know how to get student aid. They didn't know how to fill out applications. They didn't know how to apply for courses. They didn't know anything, but we figured it out together and it was so much less stressful and daunting because I watched so many kids from my school whose parents came from the same sort of background and they ended up not going to school just because they couldn't figure out how to go to school. Yeah. And I would say like number one thing is do not put limiting beliefs on your kids. Like it's so it's I I always go back to that. Like, don't be like, oh, none of these kids are going to the NHL. I am watching today the kids that Trent played hockey with getting put as first round draft picks in the NHL. So guess what? They are. Someone has to go to the NHL. You know, we went and watched Angelina do robotics the other day and I'm like, maybe Angelina will become an engineer and Dave was like well her grades aren't really up for an engineer and I'm like if we don't believe in her though then those dreams can't ever happen she doesn't know to dream those dreams yet so if it's something that your kid is showing an interest in and they're passionate about it and they're having fun while they're doing it help give them some ideas of future visions like help them paint the vision of their future life like kids I learned this in my psychology children's development class like kids that live with a purpose and a passion for some sort of future vision they do better in life and Mm. it's up to us to cultivate those passions and help them paint that future vision so that they know what am I working for right because when you're a kid and something gets hard you default to I want to quit because you know that's that's when something's hard you want to quit like that's human (laughs) nature right but if you're the kind of parent that painted them this vision for when you grow up like yeah it's gonna be hard it's gonna be a grind you just gotta keep showing up and keep showing up and keep showing up and you know if your goals if getting to your goal is strong enough you won't quit when it's hard that won't matter because you've already envisioned this life and this future for yourself you know if you're a child athlete like you've already seen yourself lifting that Stanley Cup up over your head you know you've already seen yourself getting that Super Bowl ring like if you're envisioning that every single day of your life it doesn't matter like we've already seen these stories we've seen these kids come from you know the inner city and nothing and having nothing and not having the money to buy basketball shoes and they become NBA stars yeah right? and why they did that because they had a relentless pursuit to the vision that their people, someone surrounding them, they always have that story of that coach, that parent, that teacher that just said, I believe in you and I am going to help you see that vision and I am going to help you get that self-efficacy to believe in yourself and know that it doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter that you don't have money. It does it, None of that matters, right? Like when Trent started hockey, I was flat broke. Like I was bouncing pay. I was, uh, my paycheck would bounce. My bills would bounce. I had no money. And his and hockey's known for being an expensive sport. And people always said, like, if you don't have money, you can't play hockey. We didn't have money. So technically, Trent should never even have gotten to where he is today, you know? Yeah. Which, again, is still at the beginning of his journey. He really, like, he's accomplished so many things for a kid, but he still has so many things still to accomplish. But if I would have stopped with, oh, if you don't have money, your kid can't play hockey, we wouldn't even be to today, right? Like, we wouldn't even be having this conversation because his first chess pad was given given to us by another parent and all of his hockey gear came from played again for the first like three years like we had no money at all for gear but I he all he wanted to do was play the sport like I had put him in a learn to play um into a skating lesson and he couldn't even skate like he sucked at skating and I remember one time I was um I had been divorced from Trent's dad and it was before me and David got together and there was a guy that I was dating and he had came out and like skated with Trent like one of his very first time skating and he's like your kid hates it out here you should just let him quit and it was because he was like on a team that lost every single 
single game. The first team Trent was on lost every single game. They never won a game. Aww. And I told him the first game that like winners get ice cream. So every time he'd come off, I'd be like, do you want to get ice cream? And he's like, no, only winners get ice cream. So like he was super depressed and sad and he wanted to quit every single time. And I was like, no, we don't quit. Like we don't quit. You wanted to play. We're going to play, you know. And he didn't want to quit, but he also didn't want to lose, right? right? But if I would have listened to the people around me that were like, just let your kid quit. He doesn't have to keep going. Like, he, they lose all the time. They lose all the time. I'm like, it doesn't matter if they win or lose. Like, he's cultivating skills for the future, and he likes doing it. It wasn't that he didn't want to show up or that he didn't want to practice or that he didn't want to play. He didn't want to lose, right? Yeah. And nobody wants to lose. Losing isn't fun, right? Losing sucks. But those lessons he learned from early on failing – what did it teach him that he needed to get better, that he needed to practice, that he needed to shoot pucks when he got home? And that's what he did every day. He'd come home and he'd shoot pucks and he'd come home and we'd play mini sticks. And I got rollerblades and a stick and I got out there and I'd play hockey with him, right? And I cultivated that dream, not necessarily because in my mind someday I hope my kid would play in the NHL, but because that was the first thing he really showed a strong interest that he wanted to do. He wanted to be like those big boys that were walking in the locker room. And I wanted to be the parent that said, dude, reach for your dreams. Like drive for that, drive for that dream because kids need that encouragement. So we got a little longer than I intended, but <laughs> um, I get fired up about this because I, I just, I hear it in the rinks, these parents that are just like, oh, they're not, you know, they're not going to go pro. Or I, I hear it in schools where it's like, oh, my kid doesn't get good grades. Like he's probably just going to work at McDonald's. Like if you don't believe in your kids, they're not going to believe in themselves and you're putting those limiting beliefs on them and that takes if they ever do the work to get through that it takes years and years to get out from under those beliefs that others put on you like yeah. at some point in time someone told you oh well you're chunky so for the rest of your life you had body dysmorphia and thought you were fat or somebody told you you're not creative look at how bad you did at that art so for the rest of your life you said I'm not creative and you didn't want to do anything artistic mm -hmm. if somebody would have told Trent when he was on a team well you guys lose all the time you suck at hockey and we all left it at that he probably would never play another game of hockey and that would have been it right you probably would have punched someone right in the face right but it it it, it was because i i never allow that for my children like if they want to do something and they're passionate about doing it and i see that they like doing it and it's fun for them I want to cultivate that I want to set that in fire I don't want them to feel like they have to go this traditional you know this is the way no dude Make your way. Make your way in life. Set up your story because everybody is tuning into your story and they're all waiting for this exciting ending. And the traditional way isn't an exciting ending. That's the expected way, right? Like that's okay, great. Like you did that thing. The excitement comes in the person that writes their own exciting story and, you know, they fall down and, and they get injured and they're out and then they, come, they make this comeback and then they don't make the team and they're out and then they make this comeback. You know, like those are the stories we like to see. Like nobody ever is excited about the hero that doesn't face any adversity. We're excited when we see them keep coming back and keep coming back and keep grinding and proving them wrong. Like we bought Trent this, this picture. It's downstairs in his room on the wall and it says prove them wrong. And when the pandemic happened um, and they closed the gyms, we would work out down there and I would just see that every day, prove them wrong, prove that wrong. And it just, it creates that fire in you. Like don't listen to what society says don't let those people that are like oh you can't do that that's stupid that's silly that's that's not going to make you any money that doesn't make sense nobody you know how hard it is to do that so what if I'm willing to do the work and outwork everybody else and go through that hard I deserve that dream I deserve that happy ending and and you you hit a lot of really good points is number one I want to say it's never too late it's never too late to say you know what I'm not living my dream I'm not living my passion I'm gonna pursue something else whether it's it's sports whether it's writing what I mean like I've been working on a manuscript for like three or four years and the first the first one I wrote when I was 15 I went back and I read it and I'm like this sucks but at the time I was like yes I did this this is amazing I can actually be an author because ultimately that's what I would love to do um so you're never too late and the other thing I wanted to point out is 
if you love something and you're passionate about it, like just do it. Who cares if you make money off of it? I mean, and that's one thing I've learned from Gary Vee. Like he was like, oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. Gary will tell you, like if you if you watch any of his stuff, he sucked at school. He um he absolutely sucked at school. He got really bad grades, but he is an entrepreneurial genius. Mm -hmm. So if your kid is you know, doing their best. Obviously, you want to make sure they do their best. Um, if they're doing their best and they're still, you know, C's, D's, whatever, don't count them out of the game. They have to help them find something that they love, that they're passionate about and make them, um, you know, help them find YouTube videos, find things that they can do to increase their knowledge for that. Um, but it's never too late. Who cares if you don't make money? If you're doing something that you love, Friggin do it. I'm not I I sit down and I write. I have no idea if I, if anybody is going to even be interested in the story that I'm writing. But I don't care because it's in my head. I'm going to get it out. I'm going to love it. And who knows? I mean, if one person reads it and they're like this is freaking amazing, great. I'm an author. People love my stuff. Yeah, and I think like that goes to be said too. Like just you're not always going to be good at anything. Like Trent's going to have lots and lots of games and practices he's awful at. I'm a runner. I'm going to go out and I'm going to have a hundred bad crappy runs for like one good run, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to have to, we have to fail over and over and over again to get great. That's, that's part of the process. It's all part of the process. But I feel like, and we circle back to uh like I posted like people can change most don't and that's what separates the average from the excellent this is what separates the average from the excellent is the people who give up people who quit now there's something to be said for if you're going down a path and you come to a place where you're like you know what we got to cut our losses we got to back up and find a different avenue to make this happen do that I'm not saying like just grind and grind until you know like there's nothing left and it's all for naught but don't I mean god don't give up like if you if you or your kid has something that they love that they want help them get there just do it don't give up yeah don't leave it absolutely so yeah Keep doing what you love and, and remember that the world needs your gifts. The world needs what you have inside you. And everybody's gift is different. I mean, like even between the two of us, like we're both suit, we're both very, very similar, but like we have completely, completely different gifts. Yeah, absolutely. And it's difficult to follow your dreams, but it's even worse if you don't. So share this episode, encourage somebody today. Your dreams are so important and they matter. So take them seriously because you have the power to create an amazing future and it doesn't happen if you don't do that work and stay inspired and encouraged. Yeah. And it's, this is one of those, I don't know who needs to hear this episode, but everyone, everyone needs everyone to, hear, needs this to hear this episode. The world needs what you have. So go out there and show up and encourage <laughs> others to show up and Follow your dreams. <laughs> That's what we got for today, folks. <laughs> Come back next Thursday for more motivation, um, fire, and um, dream living, and live dreaming, and all of that good stuff. <laughs> oh, more tips on how to build an elite life you love and leave a legacy you can be proud of. Bye-bye. We thank you so much for joining us today on the Elite Live with Trish and Kylie. Be sure to share the episode with a friend so we can continue bringing you more great tips on grit, grace, and real estate. You can also connect with us on Instagram, Facebook. We hope the ideas we share continue to help you build an empire and leave a legacy.